welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. At the beginning of the challenge, I asked you what was your intention for the week? I want you to reflect back on that. What was your intention for the week? And what permission did you need to give yourself when we started? And are you able to give yourself that permission now after walking five days through this challenge? And if not, that is okay. I would like you to just breathe into that. If the answer is absolutely not, I am not ready to give myself that permission yet. <sighs> know that that is okay too. But you, at the beginning of the challenge, I asked you that question and I want you to sit with it today as we move through day five. And I would like you to set an intention for today as well as what would you like to get out of today's session? Are you wanting to learn? Are you wanting to get inspired? What is it that you are wanting today? Set that intention for yourself before we get started. As you know, I am Josie Wheatman. I am your visibility embodiment coach. I help with transformation. I help you take the next steps. And I am so happy to be here with you today. So today's topic is take aligned action that will move you and your business forward. So your life is moved forward in a successful way. And so my first question for you is, are you in love with your business? Are you in love with the work that you do? Are you in love with what you're putting out into the world? Does it light you up? Are you so passionate about it that you would totally do it for free? I'm not telling you to do it for free. <laughs> I would never do that. But is it something that you're so like fired up about, that you're so lit up about, that it is your mission, it is your vision, is it your passion? Because on days where it gets really hard to show up for your business, for your work, for what you're putting out into the world, that passion, that fire inside, is what's going to help you keep moving forward day after day to take that consistent inspired action. And so that's why the first question is, are you in love with what you're doing? Are you in love with what you're putting out? Does it bring you so much joy? And if you were the richest woman in the world, would you do it for free? Why or why not? We need to choose it. The thing that we're putting out into the world, our business, our work, we need to choose it. We need to choose it with a full body yes from our head to our toes. We want to be electrified, swimming, embodied in it. We want to become the thing that we are putting out into the world. And so that full body yes is needed. And I wanna ask you, can you decide today, right now with me to give yourself a full body yes? Yes to you, yes to the work you were called to do, yes to finding more joy and passion in your life, creating that joy, creating that passion for yourself. Can you say yes? You get to decide. This is your life, your business, your calling. God gave you the vision. God, life, universe, loving presence, source gave you the vision. This is your vision, your life, your way. You're in charge. And it may not feel like it all the time, but I'm here to say that you get to decide. Say a full body, heck yes, I'm going all in. Life, business, fun, joy, pleasure, <laughs> all of it. And what's that going to require you to do is to be the observant of your life, the observer, to look at the places where things are just not bringing you joy. What are the thoughts that you're having about it? What are the beliefs? What are the fears and the blocks that's keeping you from going just right to where it, it would bring you joy, where you would be at peace, where you would be that full body yes. So to be the observer of your life, the way I see it is to be like the journalist. To get so curious and ask the questions and be willing to receive the answers. And then the next step is to take action, inspired action from whatever comes up. And so you have to be open for that and you have to be present. You have to be in your body fully, not disconnected. And in order for us to be in our bodies fully in our lives and our business, we have to feel safe. 
And sometimes what we do, especially as women, is we look outside of ourselves to find that safety, our protector, our man on the white horse, the knight in shining armor, right? We look for that on the outside of us. But how can we start to find safety within ourselves now? How can we give ourselves that safety? What does your body need to feel safe? What does your soul need to feel safe? For my learnings, it is definitely that self-trust piece. It's doing what you say you're going to do, showing up for yourself, clapping for yourself, cheering for yourself, loving yourself. That is when you start to create safety in your body. You give a safe place for all the parts of you to hang out and to be loved and to be cherished. I'm thinking like a baby, like held, supported. So as you've learned this week is to embody and be an embodiment of what you do, of who you are. You have to become the very thing you want. You have to become the very thing you're calling in. So who are you when you're living your vision? Doesn't that instantly bring a smile to your face? Being embodied, being fully in yourself, having the safety, being open and present, being the observer, is what it's going to require of you is to be vulnerable, to be honest. But first with yourself, before you're with vulnerable and honest with anybody else of what's going on with you, you do that for yourself. You do that through journaling. You do that through meditation. You do that through thought work. You do that by showing up for yourself. As humans, we want to shrink when it's time to be vulnerable (laughs) with ourselves about the things that aren't working, the things that are blocking us, the beliefs. And so it's our job to keep staying open, open to loving ourselves more, open to feeling safe, to feeling connected to yourself, open to receiving more, receiving what you need. We are natural givers. We will give. But can we allow ourselves to receive, receive what you need? even receive what it is you want. And again, that's a practice and that's an allowing. That's a, that's something that you work on each and every day to be able to receive what you need is to be able to be honest with yourself first and be clear, crystal clear on what is it that I even need? What is it that I even want? And then when it comes time to ask for it, you're 100% clear. And so your breath is going to be your best friend to allow you to welcome yourself into the present moment at any time where it's feeling overwhelming, it's feeling chaotic, So we're going to go ahead and do some breath work this morning where we're going to breathe in and out. And again, we're just being present with ourselves, whatever emotion is present with us, wherever we are right now with ourselves, whether we're tired, whether we're full of energy, we're just going to drop in. A really awesome way to become present with yourself is to pay attention to the bottoms of your feet on the ground and then alternate feet, like paying attention to your left foot and then paying attention to your right foot. And then again, back to your left foot and then your right foot. And then noticing if you noticed any difference in the sensations of the two different feet. It just brings you back into your body. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you do a little bit of a box breath. I'm gonna invite you to do it. If you feel called, please join me. This is where we're gonna breathe in for four. We're gonna hold for four, one, two, three, four, and we're gonna breathe out for four, one, two, three, four. So again, we're gonna breathe in for four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna hold for four, four, three, two, one, and we're gonna go out for four, one, two, three, four. Just gonna settle in. And so if you had to pick one aligned action right now in this headspace present, what would that be one aligned action that you can do today That's going to move you forward, whether it be in your life, in your business, and what you do. What is that one aligned step that comes up for you? Write it down without judgment. And usually what comes up is something really simple. (laughs) So I've shared a bit of my transformation with you guys and what brought on my work. So growing up, I literally felt so disconnected from my body. I thought that it was normal. It was normal to always be running away. It was normal to always not feel safe here. It was normal to look outside of me for validation. I didn't know what it was to trust myself. I had no idea. And so that led me on this journey to find out who am I? Who is this Josie? And so the work that I'm sharing with you guys today is that work. It's the journey that took me to figure out who is Josie, the embodiment piece, the breath work piece, the journaling, the asking myself the hard questions, being vulnerable with myself, being honest with myself. And it took me finding my values. What is that I value? What is it do I stand for? So I'm going to ask you that question. What is it do you stand for? What is it do you value? Is it family? Is it freedom? Is it peace? Is it adventure? Is it friendships? 
what do you value? When we go into business and we're finding that passion, we're finding that joy, and we're in business for ourselves, do we know what is, is the end goal? What is it that we want? What is it in that five-year mark? What is it do we want for our life, for our business? Are you willing to allow yourself to start today, yesterday, <laughs> to move little by little by taking these aligned actions? Have you sat down and thought about what is your reason? What is your big why? What is that thing that's going to pull you forward on the days where you don't want to do it? <laughs> you don't want to show up. You want to hide. What is that reason? What is that big life-giving why? Why is it going to bring you joy? Why is it going to support you? Why? Ask yourself that question. Why do you want what you want? What you're calling in, why do you want it? And this evolves and changes and grows. One more moment here for you to answer the question, what is your reason? What is your why? Can you allow yourself to see your why? Can you believe in your why? Does it touch your heart? Does it touch your soul? And usually what happens with your why is your values play a huge part on your why. So if you can know your values, it becomes easier for you to say your why and know your why. So for me, my big why is my family. So growing up, we were our immigrants. So I moved to the United States when I was six years old, not knowing a word of English. My parents brought four children here and had another here in the States. And yeah, we didn't know English. My parents were working two jobs at times, both of them working two different jobs, working so hard to support us, meaning I was left home as the oldest to take care of my siblings, meaning my parents couldn't show up for our sports teams. They couldn't show up for us because they were so busy making a life for us to support us, to provide for us. And so I made a deal with myself way back when, that when I become a mom, being home with my child, having the freedom of time was going to be a non-negotiable for me, that I was going to do whatever it took, no matter what, to create that freedom of time. And so when I got pregnant with Everett, I even, I didn't even have a choice. That was COVID. And I was a cosmetologist at the beauty salon at that time. And I couldn't go to work. But I remember that deal that I made with myself that I was going to do something that allows me the freedom of time to be with my son. Because growing up, my parents weren't able to do it. And I saw how much they missed out on. And they worked so hard for us. And so my why literally sits in my heart every day and pushes me forward. And my value is my family. And so those two go hand on hand. And so when the day comes where I want to quit, where I don't want to show up, I remember that why. So when we focus on what we do want instead of what we don't want, that's when we can start to magnetize it to us. Our minds naturally go to the negative. Our minds naturally go to the things that we don't want. And all day, every day, we're seeing it everywhere in society, <laughs> be it on the TV, out walking, when we're at the grocery store, we're just seeing all the things all the time. And so knowing what you value, knowing what you want, knowing your whys, that is what's going to set you up for success to keep you moving forward. So this free challenge, I created it to help you to know my coaching style, my teaching style, to get a feel for my vibe, my presence, for me to explain to you what the work I did to get to where I am today, which is that embodiment work, that worthiness work, that inner child work, that radical self-love and self-acceptance work. So my Shatter the Box in Bloom is an invitation to go deeper, deeper in practice of embodiment, deeper in practice of worthiness, deeper in practice of holding and being with your inner presence, your inner child, working on that radical self-love and self-acceptance by holding yourself, loving yourself, so that you're able to use your voice, claim your power, and do the thing that you can't stop dreaming about in your life, in your business. So as you know, the enrollment for my program, Shadow the Box and Bloom, is open. And for your fast action bonus takers, there are two big bonuses that I am so excited about. The first one is the podcasting one, and that is with Renessa, my podcasting director and editor, answering all your questions that you ever wanted to know about podcasting and also how to use your voice. So podcasting for me, what it did is it allowed me to tell my story from a healed place. And so even if you don't go into podcasting, learning to tell your story, learning to use your voice through whatever medium that you would like to use can be very beneficial. So I do think this bonus can be for you, whether you start a podcast or not, but just learning how to craft your story, how to tell your story and use your voice to do it. 
And the second bonus is the create structure and systems in your business with ease and flow with Erin, my executive assistant, who has done just that for me, set up systems and structures <laughs> so that I can show up and shine and do the work that I, my life work, my mission, my vision. And so she's going to be there to answer all your questions and give you the systems that she would recommend and the structures, the time management. She is the boss at that. <laughs> So we find it so easy and we feel so comfortable investing in our children, investing in our partners and our business. But when it comes time to invest in ourselves, we hesitate. We feel uncomfortable <laughs> and we just don't. We shy away from it. And so acknowledge that about yourself. If you're in a place where you're like, oh my gosh, I have a million different things. I have my child. I have my significant other. I have this, this or that. But why not invest in yourself? That is the best investment you will ever make is the investment you make on yourself. So Shatter the Box and Bloom is for you if you have related deeply with this week, with this work. And so my big process for the work that we do is first, you have to decide what it is you want. You have to trust yourself, trust the universe that by making that decision, it will start to flow and inspired action will follow. And then you'll start to accept yourself, accept yourself where you are. Be with yourself with you where you are right now and ultimately let the inner peace of the inner voice of the inner power guide you forward so that you are able to bloom. And the acronym for bloom is to believe, to love yourself, to observe, to be open. So that way you can magnetize all the things that you're calling in. So for what you want, does it feel good to your soul? So for years I did the, I'm just going to fake it till I make it, right? That's what we grew up hearing. <laughs> they can tell you make it and eventually it will come. And that got me so far. It did. But there comes a point where willpower won't get you over the finish line. There comes a point where you have to go deeper. You have to do the healing work that is within yourself. You have to do the work on your thoughts. So again, our beliefs, the secret, our beliefs, our thoughts, what is running the show in the back of our minds, that our subconscious mind that we don't even know. As it states in the Bible, all things are possible to those who believe that is possible. And so it's okay to have doubts. Doubts about your goal, doubts about your life vision, your life mission. It's okay to have doubts. We're human, but I want you to get excited when your doubts show up because that's where the work is. That's where the magic can happen. That's where the shifts can happen. That's where the transformation can happen. When you're ever, you're stepping into something new, whenever you're trying a new way of being into the world, doubts love to show up. And what that means is you're on your way to believing. Because once you get over those doubts and you're stuck proving to yourself, I can show up for myself. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to look deeper inside myself to know who I am so that when those doubts show up, I can hold them. I can feel the disconnect and still offer love to myself. So it's inner work. It's an inner game. It is prayer. It is journaling. It is embodiment. It is thought work. It is my life's work. So when I feel doubt, I pray to receive, receive what is already here for me. So for me, what prayer is, it's in being in the receiving mode. Growing up, I used to think that you had to beg and plead to get answers. But honestly, it's a receiving as a thank you for all I have. Thank you. And I am ready for more. And I am thankful. Asking for what you desire. Acknowledging that you already have it inside of you to do the thing. And keep asking yourself, what is the next best step? What is the next best move? What can I do today? Asking yourself the question, what does it feel like? Why am I blocking myself for what I want? And what is the doubt that's showing up for me today? What is the block? What is the barrier for doing the thing that I know I want to do? Because I had to earlier write an aligned action. So what is the barrier? What is the block that's going to stop you from doing that thing? We have to get out of our heads for that answer. You have to take a breath and feel your bum on the chair, feel your feet on the ground. What is the block? What is the barrier? that's going to stop you from taking that next best step that showed up for you. And when we start asking ourselves these questions, it doesn't always feel good. Sometimes it feels bad before it feels good. And that's what kept me from doing this work for so long was because I was like, well, the law of attraction, you always have to feel good. You're not allowed to feel bad, but it's only going through those feelings of discomfort, the feeling of there's a block, there's a barrier, there is doubt. Do we get to the other side where we can feel good, where we can take action from an aligned place? So be with that discomfort, hold that block. And what I mean with that is breathe, soothe yourself, let yourself know that it's okay. It's okay. 
And I love the care pose. Like this is like my go-to, like just hugging up on yourself as you breathe, knowing that it's okay to have these blocks. It's okay to have these doubts and you're going to be here to witness. And as you start answering these questions, then you can start to let it go. You can start to release it, examine the belief and ask yourself, what am I making this belief mean? What am I making this mean? What am I making this block and barrier mean? Is it even true? You have to teach yourself the new feeling that you want to have. You have to be so gentle with yourself. And again, be that observer and start to dismiss the thoughts and move your attention. And now that you have acknowledged it, that's where the magic happens. So right now we're stuck in the in-between as we're moving into what we want. We're stuck in that in-between as we were talking earlier in the week, that size that doesn't fit, right? We're almost into those size of jeans that are going to fit us. And we're just so close and we're in the in-between and we're still feeling like that fraud. We're still feeling paralyzing fear. I want you to know that's normal. That's so normal. And what that's asking of you is to slow down and be present with yourself where you are today seeing what the work you started from and where you are now and where you are going. Like we're just building bridges and we're constantly moving and we're constantly building those bridge by doing that work of asking yourself these thought provoking questions. So now we're going to vision and dream a little because that is where the fun is for me. I love it so much. And so when you're living that vision that we had, that visualization we had yesterday where you're five years into the future, What does your days look like? Is there one thing you can do today that will bring that future vision to life today? Is there one thing you can do that will bring that vision to light today? And with that vision, how are you showing up for yourself in five years from now? Your vision met. Can you start showing up for yourself today? Where can you show up more so that you're bringing that vision to now, to today, to this moment? That focus piece is the secret sauce. Focusing on what the days look like, how you're showing up and your vision and bringing it here, bringing it today. And so by constantly remembering that vision and constantly putting yourself in it and figuring out how you can bring it to yourself now, that gives you so much clarity and it allows you to be able to do the work that you need to do to get you to that vision. And so now we know our big why. Now we know the vision. Now we know what is going to pull us forward. What more do you need to know? What's the question in your mind right now? Do you need to give yourself that permission? Can you give yourself permission to go all in, to try it on? I mean, try it on. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least you're trying it on. You're being honest with yourself where you are right now. I would love for you to write down, like I give myself permission to try it on. And how does that make you feel? It starts where you are. It starts right now today. And so we've talked a lot about the feminine energy of being visioning. We're so great at that. The masculine energy I want to take a little time to talk about. So the masculine energy is actually the doing. It is where we take action. It is where we go, where we move forward. It is that consistency piece where we keep moving and taking the next step and the next step and the next step. And that is what the Shadow of the Box and Bloom program is. It's where we get to work, (laughs) where we actually do the things that is going to require us to move forward. We get into a community. There is support. You're allowed to change your vision. You're allowed to mold your vision. And as it grows with you, you have a community, a safe place to take action and a place to stay hungry and stay fueled because all of us are going in that same direction. I know for me that knowing myself is the greatest work I've ever done. And so I know for you, that will be your greatest work as well. It's getting to know yourself, being able to say, who am I? And knowing without a shadow of a doubt that answer for yourself. This is where the overflow starts. This is where you start to be so full that you can't help but give from a place of fullness where your cup is filled so you can fly. And fly, the acronym is first love yourself. Fill your cup so you can fly. First love yourself. Vaking pleasure, vaking satisfaction. It just has to stop. We have to allow ourselves to feel the pleasure, feel the joy, feel so full so that we are loving ourselves so that we are flying, so that we are shining our light, so we are taking up space, claiming our powers. And it starts by making those big, bold promises to yourself first, giving yourself those permissions. So if I were to ask you the question, what are five things in your life right now where you're faking it? You're faking it till you make it. Could you say five places where you're faking it till you make it? What are five things you're faking that you can let go of? Even one thing, even if you were to come up with one thing, 
That is not bringing you joy. That is not bringing you pleasure. That is not pure satisfaction. <laughs> Are you willing to release? Are you willing to let it go? Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're gonna do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are an all podcast places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.